Hello everyone, and welcome to Pulp Crazy. I'm Jason Aiken. Due to Halloween taking place in October, I am going to be putting out some additional episodes that focus on supernatural stories. This episode is one of them. I will be discussing Catherine Moore's groundbreaking sword and sorcery heroine, Jural of Jewelry. The red-headed warrior first appeared in the October 1934 issue of Weird Tales. Her debut, Black God's Kiss, was the cover story that month. The character would return to Weird Tales in Further Adventures, written by C.L. Moore, which includes one crossover story with Moore's other character, Northwest Smith. The crossover was co-written by her husband, Henry Kuttner. It's pretty cool to look back at Weird Tales letters columns to see the high praise for more stories by people who have no idea she is a woman. I believe the fact that she is a woman gives her a better take on what makes a strong feminine character than any male writer ever could, especially the male writers of the late 30s and early 40s. I think she just has a real unique take on a female sword and sorcery character. In Jarrell's debut story, Black God's Kiss, we find her castle under siege by invaders. It appears her home is somewhere in medieval France. She manages to escape from her cell by outsmarting and outmaneuvering the guard. She then manages to rendezvous with the castle priest. In order to defeat the invaders, she travels through a secret passage in the basement of the castle into a dark underworld inhabited by supernatural beings. She travels to the underworld to seek out a weapon capable of defeating the invaders and getting her castle back. The follow-up story Black God's Shadow is a direct sequel to Black God's Kiss. Jural, feeling remorse for her actions in the previous story, returns to the underworld, looking for redemption. The third story, Jural Meets Magic, is possibly my favorite story. She pursues a sorcerer through a castle window and winds up in a magical realm ruled by an even darker Sorceress. The fourth story, The Dark Land, is also very interesting. Since Jarrell has been touched by the supernatural too many times, this leaves her vulnerable to otherworldly magic. A supreme being abducts her into his realm to be his bride. The fifth story is the aforementioned crossover with Moore's Northwest Smith character, co-written by Moore's husband, Henry Kuttner. I haven't read this yet, as I'm reading, waiting to read some Northwest Smith stories first. The title of the Jural of Jory in Northwest Smith crossover is Quest for the Starstone. The sixth and final tale is titled Hell's Guard, where Jural is forced to enter an ancient haunted fortress to obtain a hidden treasure in exchange for her men being ransomed by a rival warrior. All of these are worth reading. They are extremely well written and very entertaining. Something tells me that Roy Thomas and Barry Windsor Smith's Red Sonia, the she-devil with a sword, owes just as much to Jural of Jewelry as she does to Robert E. Howard's original Red Sonia of Rogatino, as far as inspiration goes. I highly recommend the Black God's Kiss collection that Paizo Publishing put out in 2007 as part of their Planet Stories line. This is the complete Jural of Jory by C.L. Moore, including all of the stories mentioned above. There is also a nice introduction by Hugo and Nebula award winner Susie McKee Charnas. This is the definitive collection, and I highly recommend purchasing it. Buy it from the Paizo website, which I'll link to in the show notes. 
don't buy it from Amazon. It appears to be out of stock at Amazon and only available from individual book dealers on there. And they've jacked up the price. If you are interested in a sample, I have included a link to Hell's Guard from the Pulp Magazine's project in the show notes. They have a scan of the original April 1939 issue of Weird Tales, which Hell's Guard appears in. That will give you an, an idea of what the Jural of Jewelry stories are all about, and I think you'll want to read even more. Thanks for watching. Pulp Crazy is located at pulpcrazy.com. I'm at pulpcrazy on Twitter and facebook.com slash pulpcrazy. Following me on Twitter and liking me on Facebook is a great way to stay up to date with episodes. I don't post on these feeds often other than when announcing new episodes are up. Also, feel free to email me at pulpcrazy at gmail.com. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I hope everyone is getting ready for Halloween.